like to call the to order the Freeburg Community High School District 77 uh, school board meeting. Tender, you can call roll. Mr. Haas. Here. Mrs. Staub. Here. Mrs. Nail. Here. Mr. Henning. Mr. Parrish. Here. Mrs. Morgan. Here. Mr. Gout. Here. We have enough for a quorum. Uh, Join the Pledge of Allegiance. Do we have any agenda changes? No, we don't. Any public comments? There's nobody present uh, in Online. person. Online, do we have anyone? None noted. Uh, we'll move on. Uh, I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. So move. So move. Uh, move. A motion by Mr. Parrish. Hi, Mr. Henning. Hello, I'm on. All right. Uh, I have a motion. Get a second. Second. Uh, second. Uh, Kendra? Uh, seconded with uh, Mr. Gow. Sorry. All right. Mr. Haas? Aye. Mrs. Staub? Aye. Mrs. Nail? Aye. Mr. Henning? Aye. Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Morgan? Aye. Mr. Gow? Aye. All right. Uh, item number six committee uh, reports. None. None. Uh, item number seven, uh, Ms. Stein, student members report. Um, first off, all the student body, everybody that attested is just happy that we're back. Everybody, it feels a lot better that not half of the school is in here, but everybody, even though we're having masks, um, everybody understands that. Um, this morning for our student council meeting, we held elections for the officer positions. Um, I'm the president, Macy Slidham is the vice president. Antonio Borja is the secretary, and Abby Bendick is the treasurer. We also started to plan everything that goes into our homecoming week. Um, that's going to be September 19th, and then the dance is going to be September, Saturday the 25th. Um, so we're planning our Potter Club game, which is for the junior and senior girls. That's going to be Wednesday night, we think. There's a conference with a boys' soccer game, but we probably just going to have to wait. Uh, Freebird Friday, where we have all the games. Uh, like trivia and the class games. And then we're also just planning the dance for Wednesday. Um, the football team is preparing for the Lula White game tomorrow. And all of us students are ready to be in the student section. And last Thursday, for the first day of school, a couple of friends and I were, uh, organized a senior sunrise. Uh, we just saw it in the paper, actually. I don't know how that picture got taken. One of us took it. But um, that was really fun. We got out there at like 5.45, something like that. So it was a long day. Very good. Uh, we'd like to pass, if you pass on our congratulations to your brother Connor, also on his graduation. Uh, I know. There's nothing better than seeing a, a, a graduate do well in, in postgraduate school, you know, after, after high school. So, congratulations, Sharon. Uh, principal's report. Okay, good evening, everybody. So, as of today, our enrollment is right around 690. 94 for this year so far. Um, we still have one or two students that say they're coming but haven't registered yet, or one or two that are not sure they're staying because they may be transferring to their school. So hopefully by the next meeting I'll have more of a definitive number, but I don't think it's going to change too much. I'm I'm expecting probably around 690. We had a huge influx of transfer students as well this year, in addition to the additional 50 freshmen in the class that we were expecting. So. We're definitely getting crowded. Um, the first day of school when they were all here was really awesome to see all of them, but at the same time, I was like, oh my goodness, there are a lot of kids in the building. We just haven't seen it, and I'm so happy to have them back. The freshman class is massive in size. Uh, Lori and I had class meetings the first day, and the freshmen definitely were the, uh, the big class out there. We were teasing them that they should win the pep rally, sorry, 
because they should be able to out scream anybody. And at that point, they all started screaming. I'm sure they heard them all through the school. So uh, they are so excited to be back. All these kids. It is just they want to be in school. They want to do their extracurriculars. And we continually talk to them about the math that if we have to do this to get you all here and to be here and remain here. Let's do what we can because we do not want to be. We don't want them to miss out. So. We do have um, a few students that are gonna, well, at least one right now that has um, gotten into the Ingenuity program. This is the um, program that we contracted with to do the full remote learning. So if there's a student that cannot attend school for medical reasons, they have to get the medical certification paperwork that's on our website. It has to be filled out by the parent, signed by the doctors with reasons why they cannot attend school. Um, I've had about four or five parents pick it up. One has turned it in so far, the student is off and learning with this Edgenuity program. Um, Edgenuity does the entire online learning, there's lessons, everything comes out of the Illinois course catalog, so we match it up with what classes they would need here, and then eventually their credits will transfer back to Freeburg High School and they're still a Freeburg High School student. Um, Jackie Woodworth is going to be the mentor liaison between those students and Edgenuity. Um, they've been great to work with so far and the first experience with that student has gone very smoothly. So um, it's not going to work just for kids that are poor or most because of you know compromising reasons or they can't get the vaccine. But if we have any student that's going to have to have a surgery and be out the entire semester, this is also going to make a really good option for those poor <coughs> students. So, I'm hoping to see this this go really well, but um, that is the program that we are using. So, so far so good. And that's that's uh, on a semester basis. Yes. Isn't it? So they have the option to come back. Yes, they can come back in January if they want. Um, and the good thing about Edgenuity is, if I get somebody, let's say in mid October, that all of a sudden can't be at school for whatever reason for long term for Christmas. Edgenuity will let us enter them in at that time and then we'll kind of average the grade and adjust the time frame so they can go in. They cannot leave early and come back to school though. If they're making commitments, they have to be in for the semester. It's, we can't have them really bouncing back and forth. But in an extreme situation, this is going to be very beneficial, I think. So, a um, couple of things in your folder. Um, I wanted to give you an update on the dual credit offerings. So you should have a sheet that looks like this, and it says guidance on top. Um, Ann Minard, our guidance counselor, and John Young have done a really great job of organizing the website. So if you go onto our website and you click on the guidance section, all these topics, high school planning, college credit, all this comes up. And then the next page is, you click on the dual uh, credit option, this all opens up and this is everything that Freeburg is offering. Um, the parents can look at this, they can look at the um, AP offerings, dual enrollment offerings through SLU 1818 or through SWIC. Um, we've added more classes this year through the SWIC. We've gotten the, um, we already had college statistics through SWIC, but now we also have Welding 1, Advanced Construction, Adult Living, um, another teacher told me they're working um, to try to get um, additional certifications for the next year. Um, so again, we offer a lot of hours. Um, even if you're looking um, with AP, you could get nine to 10 hours depending on your scores. Um, if you look at the 1818, um, we can get up to 60 you know, total credit hours up to 29. And then with the dual credit to SWIC up to 21. So, I really feel like we're moving in the right direction. I feel like we have a lot of great offerings and for our size of our school, we keep continuing to look at areas where we can provide more. Um, the SLU 1818, of course, they have to pay some part of the tuition towards SLU, but if they do need the SWIC um, dual credit, there's no problem for students. So um, additionally, if we do um, add any more dual credit, we legally have to go through SWIC first. This is a new change for Illinois. We can't just jump right to the SLU 1818. If SWIC doesn't offer it, then we can look at that. So um, some of those things are tightening up, but that's how we determine what we're gonna do with dual credit, and uh, hopefully there'll be more to come. So if you get a chance, take a look at that, and if you get a chance, take a look at the website, especially under guidance, because again, they've just done a really nice job of organizing it. Um, 
you know, even students that are looking at NCAA or NAIA eligibility and what they need, they can go to that section, click on it, and see exactly what they have to take. So they did it again, Ann and John have just done a really nice job of organizing that. Um, along with that, when we talk about dual credit, um, a lot of these programs now are definitely always requiring a master's degree to even apply for them, and that doesn't matter if it's a SCIF or SLU or something else. So I just wanted to give you a rundown. We do have a number of teachers that um, have master's degrees, but I do have others that are working for that. So I just gave you a kind of a rundown of what some of the things our teachers are starting to work for. Uh, Erica Ruiz is currently working on a master's in Spanish at SIUE. <coughs> Jackie Whitworth is currently working on a master's of arts and teaching at Lindenwood. Matt Lauer is currently working on an administrative degree at McHenry. Chris Goss is currently working on earning his driver's certification through the Illinois High School and College Driver Education Association, which is a mouthful, driver education endorsement program through the University of St. Francis near Joliet. Um, he hopes to have his last class done by October, so hopefully we can pick up um, some more kids to start driving there. Anthony Cole, um, he completed an additional 24 hours, um, passed his master's degrees in the last year, um, working on stuff with distance teaching, teaching during a pandemic, um, teaching methods, you know, any, you know, everything that can help with the classroom, he did this through Idaho State University. Brooke Clays completed a multitude of graduate level courses through Colorado State University Pueblo. Um, some of the examples that she did were teaching multiple intelligences, discipline with dignity, what great teachers do differently. Chelsea Lechtefeld is starting the Python language coding class at SWIFT. She is teaching the coding classes here at Freeburg. Um, Python is one of the main languages that kids would need to learn for the computer in order to be successful in that field. So she's going through it and learning it too so that she can you know, do more things in her classes at the coding two level. Heather Yancey is starting her graduate degree in education, innovation and innovation at Western University. Carrie Lauer is currently working on national board certification. Uh, national board certification is a voluntary advanced teaching credential that goes beyond state licensure. Um, it's a two-year program and it certifies teachers who successfully completed the rigorous certification process. And then I'd also like to, that these people have completed it this year, congratulations to Amanda Stewart on earning her Master of Arts in Art Education through the Art of Education University. And congratulations to TJ Huber for completing his special degree in curriculum design and instruction through the Kendra University. So Freeburg has a tradition of, of having, you know, great teachers and great students and, you know, it's a lot of preparation. And I'm glad to see it again that our teachers are still working and, and growing in their fields as well. A couple other things um, that came out since um, the board stuff came out. Last year we had six students named as AP Scholars. This award is granted to students who score a three or higher on three or more AP exams. Um, the students are Allison Colvis in English, U.S. Government and History, Julianne Evans in English, U.S. Government and History, Nola Mincy, Calculus, U.S. Government, U.S. History, Macy Slidem in English, U.S. Government, U.S. History, Bailey Stonebaugh, English, U.S. Government, U.S. History, Evan Wilkerson, English, U.S. Government, U.S. History, and World History. We had one student named as an AP Scholar with Distinction. This is awarded to students who score an average of 3.5 or better on all yeah. exams taken and a three or higher on five of the exams. Anna Murley did this. She took the AP in Biology, Chemistry, Calculus, English, Statistics, U.S. Government, U.S. History, and World History. So uh, we got some pretty strong uh, kids doing a lot of great things there. Um, just to kind of clarify too, if you look at our AP classes that we offer, we offer the U.S. history, we offer the government, we offer the calculus, but students can also elect to take AP exams outside of the courses. So um, if they choose to do that, uh, some of our teachers work with them and sponsor them outside of the class hours. And uh, so we have students taking multiple AP exams, even if they're not actually an AP class offered here. So I think that's a really good benefit for our students. So anyway, some information for the start of the year. It's just great to see all these kids back and the teachers back, and we just want to have a great school year. So, thanks. It seems like we're off to a fantastic start. We're going. We're going.
Item number nine, superintendent report. Uh, just wanted to echo uh, what uh, Jill said. Uh, one of the best things is to see uh, all the kids in the hallway, uh, cafeteria full, uh, the fact that we get to have everybody back in the building is awesome. Um, I did, uh, I just was gonna throw this one in here. Uh, I was contacted by Illinois State Board. Um, they were asking if we would be uh, willing to host the vaccine clinic and I said yes. So we're gonna host the vaccine clinic, they're gonna man it and uh, we'll make that available to any uh, anybody 12 and older or in the community that is interested. And I, I will send out more information when I get that all ironed out. Uh, construction update, uh, I included a budget summary. Um, I just received this late yesterday or early today. And um, so it, just basically overall, we are about a little over halfway in the project. We started in May, supposed to be done sometime in December. Uh, might get done a little sooner than that. And we're looking at about a 56% outlay of cash so far. Uh, one thing I did uh, uh, question was we, we are a little bit over on the masonry work. Um, and that uh, extra 2% was actually uh, additional work that we had to do uh, as far as to get uh, grouting in the elevator. I know somebody's gonna ask me what grouting in the elevator means and I wish I could tell you exactly, but it has something to do with masonry. I don't know if that's a good enough explanation. But uh, that was something that the uh, inspectors came in and went back and forth quite a bit with the architects and uh, that's what they worked out is a solution to whatever problems that we had. So um, otherwise everything's in line. Uh, our contingency is in very good shape. Uh, we had 606,000 um, set aside at contingency and we've only spent about 26 or 27,000 so far. So that's really good and I'm happy about that. Uh, first floor construction, uh, they finished uh, just under the wire. Um, Got everything put back together. Dennis and his guys were able to get all the furniture and supplies back in the rooms and the floors waxed. Uh, and that looks very, very nice. Second floor, I've been up there a few times this week. They are working on the drywall. So almost all of the electrical and plumbing has been done. The exterior has all been insulated. They're insulated actually in between every wall between the classrooms. Uh, so the drywall should be done probably within a week. Uh, once the drywall gets done, then they'll tape and mud that, um, and then they'll start working on uh, flooring, ceiling tile, uh, and then all the finishes. Uh, had the meeting, had a meeting this week. Um, they're hoping it's scheduled to be done uh, about mid to late uh, December. Uh, he thinks that we might be able to get into November, uh, that they're going quick enough that we might be able to get it finished a little sooner. So. If that's the case, then we're going to have to kind of talk about uh, as we get closer, you know, the whole move in process and how do we move people up to the new rooms and things like that. Uh, there's a little bit of work on the outside. Uh, they're finishing up the window shades on the outside and the siding on the south side. The siding on the north side is finished. Um, it's a kind of a light gray. I think it looks really nice. I did take some pictures and posted that the other day on Facebook, but it, uh, it turned out really nice. So excited about that, and I think that's all I have for you. Very good, any questions? Uh, item number 10, old business. Uh, item A, consider changes to the return to school plan. Uh, this is something that um, felt like it was important that the board um, take a vote and make it a, a, a formal decision on our return to school plan. The biggest issue, obviously, is the mask wearing. Uh, I have sent some uh, information to the board um, as far as what the governor and the IDPH is doing. Uh, there were uh, quite a few schools or a handful of schools that uh, said they were just going to go mask optional. I um, saw an article today that the ISBE has uh, put 29 schools on probation uh, because they were not following the mask mandate. So what they have to do then is basically go through and come up with an action plan. Uh, what happens if you're on probation? Well, if you don't make the corrections, you're not allowed to participate in IHSA sanctioned events. You, 
your diplomas are not recognized by the state. Um, this all means there's going to be a lawsuit somewhere down the line, and we're all just sitting here pawns for somebody. Uh, but um, I think it's important that the board uh, publicly um, stands behind what the uh, what we are trying to do here at school. Uh, so I'm asking the board to um, take a vote and approve the return to school plan, which basically is everything we've done in the past, but uh, now that we have to um, mask or mandatory for anybody in the building. Any what happened with the uh, lawsuit that was being filed in Clinton County? I haven't heard it. Okay. I haven't heard what it's done. I, I don't know. Um, I thought I, it was supposed to be heard. I, I have not heard if a judge has ruled one way or the other. Okay. Yeah. So I, 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 I do believe there's going to be more lawsuits. I don't think that's going to be the only one. Yeah. Um, this particular order by the governor expires on the 20th, so tomorrow. So we're anticipating to hear, I'm guessing, He's, it's going to be the same. I don't think they're going to change course, but this one does expire. So, other questions or comments? I'm, I'm not sure why we need a motion. It's not like we really have a choice. Well, but I think this is important that the board is, you know, publicly says that, you know, as Freeburg High School, we're going to follow this mandate and, and students are required to wear masks. Uh, Mr. Henning or Mr. Gao? Uh, I, I believe we need to follow the uh, mandates as much as I hate to wear a mask myself and stuff. But uh, I think to keep, we need to do this to uh, ensure that the kids stay in school all year and, and, uh, and also to make sure we're in the state good graces. Reluctantly, I have to agree. I think uh, opening ourselves up to any kind of liability, uh, our insurance company has given us guidance that we risk not having uh, having that coverage. Um, I think the best that we can hope for is somewhere along the line, uh, some kind of action in the court that gives us more local control, and then and then we can uh, make a business decision. But that's, that's my. I just I have a hard time with being maskless at Chick-fil-A, Walmart, sitting elbow to elbow with somebody outside. I know it's outside, but sitting on top of people at the Cardinal Stadium or at the Muni, and then being, this is forced. This is a gun to our head. This, that's what this is. This isn't voluntary whatsoever. So I, I just have a problem with it, and we'll do what we have to do. But. I agree with you. Yeah, I don't, I don't agree because I feel like I don't see the difference of us, our kids being outside and playing sports together and then coming inside and they're being together. I mean, I don't see the difference. I know that we have to, the mandate's there and I, I don't, would never want to jeopardize our kids not getting to play sports. I mean, that's the thing, or to, or for them to work so hard and them not to get their certificate to be able to graduate to go on to college. Those are the two things, you know, but I don't, I don't understand a lot of things. I feel like that this is, I'll be curious to know how the, um, the lawsuit turns out. Well, my hopes is that uh, this only remains in effect for a short duration. But, and I will tell you that administratively, we would all rather be where we were July, whatever day it was, that we, the board said, this is, we're gonna do this, if you're vaccinated, you're gonna do this, if you're not vaccinated, this is, and you know, none of us want to be the mask police and run around and ask people to put masks on. And, you know, it's just another one of these burdens that, that pushed on to schools, and I agree, I feel like we're just these little pawns that are being pushed around, and, and uh, I, I am a part of a uh, kind of a grassroots organization that is looking for pushing the governor to give more local control. And I know you said your husband was went up to Springfield. 
you know, I, I think there's avenues that we fight this, but I think we, as a school, we have to follow. This is the rule. I mean, I like it, but this is the rule. I understand uh, Mr. Breaking uh, wanting the board to take an action to, to follow to follow this. It gives him some, some strength. Uh, we've had some disgruntled parents. Uh, I mean, it may be teachers, it may be students, but I, I think it would be, be the proper thing for us to do. Uh, is there anybody that would like uh, to make a motion concerning the governor's August 4th mandate on masks? I'm going to move on then. Uh, item number B, uh, consider concrete sidewalk addition to the project. Uh, I sent this out. I received this uh, earlier this week from uh, Pecker. Um, this is a sidewalk that would be extended from near the greenhouse, which attaches to the school, to the uh, east side uh, sidewalk. Uh, it would also add sidewalk between uh, the road that goes between us and the, and the grade school. There's a little uh, walkway that's built in now, handicapped walkway, and it would ex extend that up to the building. Uh, there's also a couple other additions. There's a sidewalk that goes uh, from the greenhouse to the ag building, and there's also a greenhouse that goes, I'm sorry, a sidewalk that goes from uh, the staff parking lot to the alley. Uh, so this is the, uh, the original bid came in, uh, probably about, I don't know, four or $5,000 higher. Pecker went back and, and uh, talked to him and, and got it down. So uh, the main sidewalk is at $15,862.80. And then the addition, uh, other sidewalk runs at right at about 40, uh, 45, 55, 10. Uh, so if we want them to do that, um, I, I felt like I wanted to bring this to the board and have the board uh, approve it. Um, even though it's under the threshold, I still feel like it's important that you guys have a say on this. Any questions or comments on the additional sidewalk? We were back there working. Tuesday night we put dredge mulch on the road garden and out at the greenhouse for FFA alumni and it would be nice to have that all very cohesive and it would be a good, a good addition. While I like they're here, the idea while they've of getting got everything it, torn up. Get it done during warm weather, not wait till the construction is done. Is there anyone that would be interested in a motion concerning the uh, concrete addition? Does it need a motion? Uh, it's a s expenditure. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can, I can prove it. It's under the twenty-five thousand dollars threshold. But again, I feel like this is Perfect. high enough that uh, Miss Nail, uh, it's seconded by Miss uh, Staub. Mr. Haas. Aye. Mrs. Staub. Aye. Mrs. Nail? Aye. Mr. Henning? Aye. Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Morgan? Aye. Mr. Gauck? Aye. A good motion passes. Uh, item number C, consider the second reading and final reading of the recommended changes to board policies. Uh, uh, 110, 120, 130, 210, 220, 230, 230, 240, 3, 30, 5, 10, 5, 30, 6, 100, 6, 125, 6, 150, 6, 170, 6, 170, 6, 170, 6, 170, 6, 170, 6, 170, due to the five-year review, which they do. Uh, this uh, approving these and getting these updated will keep our policy manual uh, in line and updated. If you recall, Angie and I went through uh, with Mr. Breaking and a representative from uh, Press Plus. We put them all on there. It's more administrative than any, anything else every five years there. They just have to be updated. Uh, is there a motion concerning the, uh, the second and final reading? So moved. Mr. Parrish, with a motion. Second. And seconded by Ms. Staub. Mr. Haas? Aye. Mrs. Staub? Aye. Mrs. Nail? Aye. Mr. Henning? Aye. Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Morgan? Aye. Mr. Gauck? Aye. Very well. Motion passes. Uh, item number 11, new business. Uh, this
this is uh, just to uh, put in front of you the, the specifications for two new buses. Uh, I've sat down with Fritz Holcomb, our transportation director, um, looked at the inventory of buses that we had. Um, he thinks that we need to replace two of our buses, bus 46 and bus 50. Uh, they're either uh, rather high miles or they are in need of more repairs than the next bus in line. Uh, these buses would be large buses, 77 passenger buses. Uh, they would be gas. Uh, that is the direction that we started to go to. I think we bought our last big bus two years ago, something like that, three years ago maybe. And uh, uh, the gas buses work out better for our mechanic. It makes it easier for him to uh, operate on those. Um, so I'm just putting these in front of you. Once these are done, then we will put this out to bid. Um, and then um, we have budgeted for both of these buses already in our budget, which we're gonna talk about later on. Uh, are you asking just to approve the bid just to specs? It is it's not the actual purchase. Correct, just, correct, just the bid specs. Just for clarification. Uh, is there a motion to approve the bid specs for two new additional buses? Or if, if anyone else has any questions or comments. So what kind of miles are on those buses to be on all fans? Um, they're both over a hundred thousand miles, I, and I, I could look it up. It was in the board packet, I thought. Oh, I must have missed it then. That's all right. I can look it up. That's fine. I'll I'll search through here and see if I can find it again. Uh, we have a motion by Mr. Parrish. Second. Seconded Second. Second. Morgan. Mr. Haas. Aye. Mrs. Staff. Aye. Mrs. Nail. Aye. Mr. Henning. Aye. Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Morgan? Aye. Mr. Gout? Aye. Uh, motion passes. Uh, item number B, consider the approval of the consolidated district plan. Uh, this is annual business, and sorry, I, I, I took the effort. I'm going to tell you. One bus has 195000 on it. Uh, that's the one with the highest miles. There's another one that's got 109000 almost 110000 and that one is in need of more expensive repairs, so that's why they put that one on there. So, okay, thank you. Okay, no problem. Uh, the consolidated district plan is, is annual business. It has nothing to do with consolidation. It is the plan that we have to send to the state that outlines how we spend our title money. So Title I, Title II, Title III money. So uh, Diane and I work on that. Uh, we've actually sent it to the state um, and got the approval from the state. Formally, we the board needs to also approve it. Uh, and that's what I'm asking you to do tonight. Any questions or comments? Not, uh, is there a motion to approve the fiscal year 22 consolidated district plan? So moved. Uh, motion by Mr. Parrish. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Nail. Mr. Haas. Aye. Mrs. Staub. Aye. Mrs. Nail. Aye. Mr. Henning. Mr. Parrish. Aye. Mrs. Morgan? Aye. Mr. Gout? Aye. The motion passes. Item number C, consider the approval of the health insurance plan. Uh, we received uh, the proposed health insurance for the upcoming year. Uh, very happy to announce that we're looking at a rate decrease of 2.4, 1.4% uh, over last year's cost, which is wonderful. Um, there's also other supplemental insurances. Some of those went up. Uh, but those are all uh, voluntary. Uh, there is no district cost on those. So we're asking that the board, uh, I'm asking that the board approve the uh, health insurance plan as presented. So moved. Second. A motion by Mrs. Morgan, second by uh, Mr. Gow. Mr. Haas. Aye. Mrs. Staff. Aye. Mrs. Nail. Aye. Mr. Henning. Mr. Parrish. Aye. Mrs. Morgan. Aye. Mr. Gout? Aye. A motion passes. It appears it's uh, almost $1,300, $1,400 a month is what it's sitting at. Okay. Item number D, recognition of parent support groups for the 2021-2022 school year. Uh, we have uh, three different uh, parent groups. Uh, that we annually, uh, uh, what's the word? we 
annually, uh, annually uh, approve uh, as official sponsors for those particular organizations. The first is the Midget Athletic Boosters Club, uh, the Music Boosters, and the FFA Alumni. And so I'm asking the board to approve them. I didn't have a motion. Any questions? Uh, we need a, a motion to approve those three organizations. So moved. Uh, motion by Ms. Morgan, second by Mr. Parrish. Mr. Haas? Aye. Mrs. Staub? Aye. Mrs. Nail? Aye. Mr. Henning? Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Morgan? Aye. Mr. Gout? Aye. A motion passes. Item number E, fiscal year 22 budget. First reading. Uh, this is just the first reading of the budget uh, for fiscal year 22. Um, there is a summary sheet that I included in the uh, packet. I believe you guys have copies of it. Um, just a couple things to point out. Again, if you recall that our, that our EAB came in uh, quite a bit higher, uh, came in at five and a half percent, and we were estimated about two and a half percent. So that was uh, has driven a lot of the increase in the revenue. So I've, I've mentioned in here that we're gonna see an increase in revenue over last year of uh, about $328,000. Um, and that's particularly in from tax revenue, our general state aid is going up because of our increased enrollment. Uh, that ESSER grant that we've got, that would be the ESSER II grant, and then our federal lunch program. Uh, so those are the three things that are going to increase the revenue. Uh, there is some increases in our expenses uh, we did add some staff, um, which caused, you know, that's some increased cost. We are purchasing two school buses, um, at least uh, possibly purchasing, purchasing two school buses. Um, and then in Fund 50, that's also, that's the uh, IMRF, so that's the additional staff. Overall, the budget is balanced. If you look at the sheets, or if you took a look at those sheets, and compare our estimated balances at the end of this fiscal year to last year, almost everything increases. So it's a, it's a very positive budget, and uh, I'm asking for you to uh, approve the first reading. Um, that budget then goes on the website for 30 days uh, before the final approval in September. Any questions or comments? Is there a motion to approve the first reading of the fiscal year 22 budget? So moved. Second. A motion by Mr. Parrish, seconded by Mrs. Staub. Mr. Haas? Aye. Mrs. Staub? Aye. Mrs. Nail? Aye. Mr. Henning? Aye. Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Morgan? Aye. Aye. Mr. Gauck? Aye. Motion passes. Item number 12, board correspondence. Uh, we're done. Item number 13, any additional agenda? agenda items? There is none. Uh, do we have reason to go on the books? Yes, uh, uh, possible litigation, personnel issues, and then to review closed session items to uh, consider uh, be kept closed. Very well, thank you for attending uh, the board meeting. We'll be going back into open session following the closed session. Uh, I need a motion to so move the closed session. Second. A uh, motion by Mr. Parrish, seconded by Ms. Morgan. Mr. Haas? Aye. Mrs. Staub? Aye. Mrs. Nail? Aye. Mr. Henning? Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Morgan? Aye. Mr. Gauck? Aye. 